with that film of dirt on the back glass and mirrors and stuff. The sun was washing that out. It's like looking at a whiteboard. Could not see a thing. <laughs> change it for anything. Mm -mm -mm, boy, ain't this some kind of a beautiful day the Lord has blessed us with. Such a beautiful election day 2020 for people to get out and vote for Trump. You know, I believe, could be wrong of course, but I believe today will be a day that lives in history. This will be the, the greatest presidential election ever. I believe he's going to win by a landslide like we have never seen in our lifetimes. Because it is a vote against pure evil. Get out and vote, folks. Well, when I buy a load of lumber, I can usually stack it on the trailer so that what I need first is on top. We don't have that luck this time. What I need first is on the very bottom. I've ever tried to handle anything 20 foot long. <laughs> These sheets are 4 foot wide and 20 foot long. I got 20 foot because he couldn't get 18 foot. Yeah, boy, aluminum is a lightweight metal, but enough of anything gets heavy. You had all the feathers you could carry. Could you carry one more? So this is the single H, obviously why it's called H. This is the single H aluminum trim or extrusion, and this is the double H. And as I said, this is aluminum. It cuts very easily uh, on the miter saw. You just want to take your time and make a slow cut so it doesn't grab it, because that'll make a mess of things. It'll give you an adrenaline rush too. But anyway, now I use these two little samples here uh, to go out and get some accurate measurements of what I need.
Okay, so what I'm doing here, got a piece of carpet padding that's left over from the uh, Morgan Avenue project. So it's new, clean carpet padding. And I'm attempting to make me a walkboard. So we'll see how that goes. on contact cement. I don't know that this will work. I'll try. Worst comes to worst, I guess I can staple it. Staple it on. I'm using the shield here to uh, keep any overspray from getting on the plastic film. I don't know that it hurt anything, but I'm not taking a chance. Right, I'll do the other end. <coughs> it says on the label here that uh, is extremely flammable liquid. Uh, the vapors can cause a flash fire. So that's when you know you've got a good product. If you breathe it, it'll kill you. And if you get near a spark, uh, it'll explode like a nuclear bomb. That's, that's how you know you've got a good product. The tricky part is, since it's contact cement, you've got to get it right first try. You don't get second tries with it. Use the two surfaces together. And with the contact cement, you put it on both surfaces. And I want to stretch this just a little bit. should work and this is the uh, that other side of the pantry that I was telling you about still has the cleats on it so now I've got a walk board that I can get on top of the polycarbonate okay so you remember the saw guide that uh, we made in a previous video and here's where we uh, we're going to use it and as I said this is already accurate and we just lay it on the mark of course, the only reason that you see that gap right there is because this is the piece we need. So I have to allow for a saw cut. Alright, so now we've turned around on the other end of the piece we just cut. We're cutting this piece off. And so you can see how you just lay the guide right on the mark. And that's how it lines up perfectly. Alright, so hang on while I set you back up here. He 
these, these tools work so much better when they stay plugged in. And here's another thing, if you make a saw guide, if you have a, you know, a factory made one and using it, uh, you don't want to put it square against the, your guide and start it because that blade will chatter just a little bit from the torque of the motor when it first starts and it will nick the edge of your uh, guide here. So start out like this with this front point right up here against that, start it, and then go in against the fence. Straight cut. Okay, so as you can see, the printing on the labels here, the film, protective film, um, you notice that it says this UV resistant side. Okay, so this has to be installed toward the outside of the building, roof and walls, uh, for the UV protection. And so Here's the two pieces that I just cut. Uh, I had to turn them over. They was upside down when I cut them. And so uh, this will be the, the UV protected side right here. And so now um, I've got to uh, change the, I've got to cut the width down just a little bit. They're actually uh, a little bit different dimension on the two panels. And uh, the uh, six foot wide is not a nominal measurement. It's, that is the actual measurement of the width of the panel and so I've got to work on that and then I want to see if there's a way that I can uh, put two of these together because all the aluminum trim is 12 foot length which would be really handy uh, in making uh, putting together a 12 foot panel but then it's uh, <laughs> I got to figure out how I'm going to handle uh, a 9 by 12 panel so I may have to summons uh, some help on that Okay, so to modify this sheet to the correct width, you can see this black line that I've drawn here. That's how much I need to cut off. I'm just going to do it with a circular saw freehand. Alright, so what I'm doing here is sealing the top edge. And it uses this foil tape, just like uh, what they use in air conditioning put duct work together only it's not hardly as wide same material though and we seal the top edge and then the bottom edge gets a vent tape which is a kind of a cloth fabric type and that lets the that lets the polycarbonate breathe because there is water in here <laughs> hauling it in the rain uh, but you have condensation it has to have a way out and so that's what I'm doing here and I stick. I just drew a line so I can get it straight. And uh, and the easy way to mash it out is to uh, use a credit card, or in this case, a an unused portion of a gift card from Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel, boy, that sure is a good place to eat. All right. So here you can see I done the same thing I done on the top with the full tape. Only I used the uh, vent tape on the bottom. And it wraps around and it's seals the bottom to prevent bugs and whatever from getting up inside but it will let it breathe and it's uh, the materials to design specifically for this uh, but it's vent tape sticky on one side all right so I'm ready to uh, start putting this first section of panels together and of course this will be uh, the first panel on the lower side out on the far end and so we'll be working from right to left putting these up so uh, this goes together here with a piece of the double H track so I know that I need three of these per side so I went ahead and laid off the whole location so I just went to this workshop and uh, used the drill press to make these holes 
so that I will screw this down on top of each truss and then the rest of the perimeter gets wrapped with a single H and so it's just cutting at the fit and of course leaving an appropriate, <coughs> excuse me, appropriate gap there'll be a little gap like about an eighth of an inch or so where the single H comes across here and that's to allow any water that builds up a uh, place to run away and uh, so that's what I'm going to be working on now this trim to fit on here is uh, not quite as easy as it sounds one of those uh, it's easier said than done things because it's uh, it goes on by friction friction fit it's quite tight and so what I'm what I'm using is actually uh, a little tool we use to put uh, laminate flooring together with that laps over the edge and pound block. And pretty well, pretty well gauge when it's seated uh, by just eyeballing this edge here with the ribs that are naturally in the polycarbonate. This bottom piece, <coughs> single edge trim has to have a few little eighth inch holes in it for uh, weep holes and the moisture that would condensate in there so it can run out. So that's what, uh, well that's what I'm attempting to do. Well that finally went through. I don't want to waste time doing that. So here's what we're going to do with a dull drill bit. If you've ever been frustrated with working with dull drill bits, well, right here is a cure. It's called the drill doctor. And you put your bit in this thing here and tighten that till these jaws come out like that where it's uh, just fairly, you know, there's really no play in it. And then you put it in this right here. You open those jaws. And there's notches to where you can adjust the pitch of the sharpen. I go about right there. Works for me. You go in there and release that and it doesn't work this one time just to make a liar out of me. Try that again. Put that in there and those jaws turn the bit and, and align it properly and you snug that down pull it out and you're ready to go and you put it in this end see see these lobes on here that makes it rock back and forth to cut cut the right pitch and you can put it in here for the back cut <laughs> focus on that. That is a fantastic little tool right there. And they're not all that expensive either. Alright, so we'll put this back in here. needs a few little weep holes. So now 
as you can see, we've got the two panels inserted into the double H track, and this will come up against this lip on this side, of course. And that leaves a quarter inch gap right there for any runoff to funnel out. Just got to cut a piece up that side. 